Science is based on the five elements of ether, fire, water, earth and air. Alright? So these five elements govern us every day. And these five elements govern every living thing. Does not belong only to Indians or Chinese or Malays. Every living thing from the insects to the worm to the animals. So the question over and over we ask, are you in harmony with these elements? The moment we are not in harmony, then we will have various kind of challenges in our lives. Too hot will affect us, too cold, you know, too much of uh, wind, and so on. Yeah. And these five elements govern five locations in our property. Number one, you need to know the northeast area is the water area. That's where you should place your element of fountain, swimming pool, all right? And that's the spiritual quadrant, a very important space in your property. Then comes the fire corner, which is in the southeast corner. That's where your kitchen must be located. Then comes the heaviest area in your property is the southwest. Important place in the property where the placement of the storeroom or the master bedroom. Then comes the air corner governed in the northwest and the center of your house is the weakest area governed by ether and normally should be left empty, air well, courtyard and should be free from all weight. If you take a notice on this hall also, the center is generally is an iron or is open and empty. This is how the flow of energy in any space. Yeah? Why is this so important in ourselves for all dwellers? Because the five elements governing the five areas, our body also has the five elements in the form of five body senses of sight, hearing, smell, taste and touch. Our body senses and our five elements must be in harmony in all the time. And they are not in harmony, then it will affect our well-being, mood and so on. Yeah? So I'm going to show you some examples how do you conduct some activities so that you can be in harmony with these elements. It's for instance, either is space, we're talking about hearing. So to be in harmony with hearing, and either early morning when you wake up, you should play soothing songs, pleasant. You can play spiritual songs, metta music for the Buddhists, the Muslims can be nashid, for the Hindus can be mantras, devotional songs, no rock songs, no mu uh, metal music. Yeah, all these kind of songs must be pleasant. Your house must not have any disturbing sounds. Sounds like. Sometimes you open certain houses, the door when you open is squeaking sound as though you're entering a haunted house. Yeah, you've got that kind of issues. Sometimes the fan keeps ticking away. Very disturbing, very min minor you think, but actually it causes disharmony in the family and the occupants of the house. Avoid that, re you know, remove, repair, grease, oil that place. Yeah? Next element is the element of air. Early morning is related to a sense of you know, feel. What you need to do is burn some incense, whatever fragrance that is suitable for you, whether it's uh, frankincense, sandalwood, rosewood, lavender. Burn that incense, stand in the front of your main door of your house, walk clockwise, all right? Go around the entire house to toilet, bathroom, storeroom, kitchen, bedrooms, staircase, living, dining, let the smoke fumigate your house. Spend more time in the corners of your house where negative energy gets stagnated. Alright? Flush it out. You gotta do it at sunrise and you can do it at sunset. At least once. You can't do it twice. And you need to do it consistently every day. Not only on special occasions. The energy flow is constant. So you need to cleanse your space. This is what we call space cleansing and it's important. What happens if we don't do? Children falling sick regularly, mood disturbance, anger, quarrel, tension, all these can relate to negative energy in your space. Yeah? Next is the element of fire which is related to sight. 
How do you harmonize yourself with fire? Early morning, when you get up, go outside your house, spend some time looking at early morning sunrise to harmonize your body with the element of fire. Right? Early morning sunrise contains vitamin D. Open your windows and dining uh, main doors in the northern and eastern area of your house. Let the sunrise come inside the property. Remove all the bacteria from your property by just allowing early morning sunrise. Yeah? Then comes the element of water, which is related to taste. Our body is nothing but made up of water. So drink a lot of water. How do you do that? You should know, adults, a lot of water drink so that you harmonize yourself. By the science of Vastu Shastra, if your house there is a leak, pipe leaking, roof leaking, tank leaking, do not ignore. When there is a leak, it indicates that your wealth is diminishing. Unwanted expenditure is going to come into your life. So what you do? Repair, plug the leak. Do not ignore. There's another huge science called signs of omen. There's another huge area which I'm not covering but just to give you insight. God sends messages in many forms from birds, from animals, from things. You need to decode it and interpret it. It's nothing to do with superstition. Sometimes these signs are telling you not to go, to go, you know, delay your journey. All these are interpretations, uh, giving you, forewarning you, foretelling you. But in modern time, people laugh at these messages, yeah? And then they do it, and then they experience difficulty, then they come and share. So try to decode it. Learning this knowledge is very, very important, yeah? Finally, we live on Earth, but always say we're not connected to Earth energies. Right? So what I'm trying to tell you here is that when is the last time you ever walk barefoot on earth? If you notice you're on sofa, shoes, in your house you're on parquet, marble floor, cement floor. I'm sure it can be many years since you walk with your feet bare feet on earth. A very good exercise to do every morning. Remove everything, go spend some time in your garden, standing barefoot on earth. What's the benefit? You're directly connected to earth energies. You discharge all the negative energy in your body down to earth and recharge your body with positive earth energy. Simple. Do it every day in the morning. Some of my Chinese friends, I used to see their houses, that little plot of land there, that also cement. Which is not good, but they don't know. Anyway, if your house a high-rise dwelling, go and find a park. Remove all the shoes, socks, everything. Walk on the park. You get a nice massage feeling. So by practicing all these five exercises, what do you benefit? That particular day, whatever you want to do, you find that you achieve the results. All right, number one. Number two, you find yourself energetic, a lot more happier. You can work long hours. Still not tangible, you may say. I give you a simple example. How do you know you're connected to energies? The rightful, prosperous energy. By doing these five exercises, you start your car and you go to work. All the traffic lights will turn green for you. Number one. You go to the most difficult spot to find parking. One parking lot waiting for you. That is the power and miracle of this science. When you are harmony with these divine energies, the divine energies will guide you to the right place at the right time. That is the power. And a friend who asked me whether it works or not, go and try it. You'll find miracles. When you're in harmony, you can do everything. Everything that you touch is right. The next person behind you, everything's wrong. How come? Doesn't make sense. You're not a magician, you know. You just again and again come back, get tuned to these energies. These energies are free of charge, no need to pay money. It, because it's free, people just ignore, do not respect the divine energies, the cosmic energy that the divine has given us. Yeah? So please follow the basis of you to connect yourself with the energies before you move and think about orientating your house. We're talking about a house, you talk about directions. 
very important how you want to organize your house. You need to use an engineering compass to determine the direction, not based on sunrise. Sun moves towards the northern hemisphere in the first six months and to the southern hemisphere in the balance six months. So you won't get an accurate reading. Take a compass, stand in the middle of your house or the main door of your house, then you will know the direction. You divide your house by three in length and breadth. All right, 22, you divide by three. 75, you divide by three, then you get your nine quadrants. Today, all of us, when you divide this space into this auditorium, all of us entered through the southeast door. That is the quadrant entrance to this place here. Yeah? Southeast door. All right. So once you know this, all right, next you need to know how to choose the house. Normally, you look at where is the main door located. Very important, the face of the house, the main door. Then comes the bathroom, toilet, kitchen, bedroom, staircase, all, oh, everything. You've got a specific place to stand and to present. Yeah, to do things here. Yeah. If you're buying a bigger house, semi D, then or bungalow, then you need to study the surrounding. Where's the hill? Where's the river? All right, where are the roads located? Surrounding, plot extension, elevation, depression, size of the plot, shape of the plot. Do not buy a plot close to a graveyard. Do not buy a house, stay near to a place of worship. It's not good also. It's inauspicious, yeah? <clears throat> Tips on directions. There are eight directions in a compass, all right? You need to choose which is the best direction for your house. Out of the eight, seven is fine. North, south, east, west, north, east, south, east, and northwest. The only direction the main door must not be located is the southwest. Avoid staying in such a property. Southwest property will attract unwanted expenditure and health issues. Yes? Plot shapes, very quickly, these are the common shapes square and rectangle which is quite common in Malaysia. Most of the houses are built in square and rectangle. And, of course, there are irregular shapes. Triangle shapes should avoid long bar, card shape, flat shape. Yeah, that's what I meant. Cuts on a land. These are normally found in corner lots or irregular shaped lands. Any cut on the land will affect your well-being. For instance, northeast growth affected, yeah? Uh, southwest, your wealth is affected, health is affected. Southeast, disharmony to the family, particularly the female. Yeah? Northwest, legal problems were faced by the family. Yeah? These are all various research done more than thousands, about 5,000 to 6,000 years ago. Yeah? Effects of cuts and extension, I like to cover something on corner lots. Those who are staying in corner lots, I know you're very proud because you have extra piece of land. But actually, I say you have an extra piece of problem. Because your land is not a perfect square or rectangle. There's always a cut in the corner lots. So normally the cuts will appear like this also. Extension, like this, extended and so on. So it's not appropriate. Roads, roads on all four sides are good, which is quite common in Malaysia. Roads on three sides like this is fine, east entrance. Is also good. Roads on all three sides with the southeast entrance is fine. Roads on three sides with the northwest. Roads on two sides with the east entrance. Your house is located in the center. This is the one that you should avoid totally. A wide junction where two roads converge into another road where your house is located. Avoid totally. Mainly, this may not be very common, but it's also found in Malaysia or many other parts of the world, but the more common one is the T-junction. Do not buy, do not stay, do not rent. In my case, I always say I do not visit people who live in T-junctions. Very inauspicious. In a T-junction property, you get unwanted problem. Number one, you suffer from terminal illness. All right? No peace of mind. Married, separated, divorced, children disunited. I went to one of the MH370 homes. 
to visit the family and I'm shocked that particular victim is staying in a property T junction. So sad. It matches with these signs. Unwanted and unexpected troubles comes to you if dwellers stay in such a property. So, like I said earlier, someone asked how accurate is this science and whether to follow. I can guarantee you the science cannot go wrong. It's so accurate. In my years of studying, researching and traveling, I have never gone wrong based on that science. That's the assurance I'd like to give you. Yeah? So avoid T-junction property totally. Yes, sir. Can I just check? Yes, sir. If you, have, if you happen to have a house at T-junction, so you can't sell it or... What do you remedy, you are saying? Remedy, yes. According to the ancient scriptures, there is no remedy for a property in a T-junction. What it says is that energy, the road from the spearing road into your house, they call it the killer chi, energy rushing into your property. I give you an example of T junction. This one is T junction. Do you know why I'm away from the T junction? I moved it away. That chi is rushing. This is T junction. This is not T junction. Away from T junction. Okay, if you want remedy, there's one spiritual remedy. What you need to do, those who are living in a T junction, for the Hindus, we place the statue of Lord Ganesha at the main gate facing the road. For the Buddhists, Lord Buddha, a Chinese Quang name. For the Muslims, Ayat Ayat Suci from the Quran, place it there, facing the road. The next day, gave one more sign for house for sale. God only can help you. That's what I said. Sorry? Well, you can rent it out, but the dweller who is occupying there will not pay your rent. He's running into trouble. So what I'm trying to tell you in short, first of all, vacate the property to a better property. Then, dispose the property even if you experience loss in recovering the actual amount of money you have placed. Don't, as long as the property remains under your name, you will experience trouble in your life, although you don't occupy it, according to the Sastras. I'm telling you very deep, really, because you asked the question. Normally, I don't tell that part. But now you ask, I'm telling you, even you've got to remove your name from the property. So that contagious, the effect is on us. Yeah? So avoid it totally. Like me, I said, I don't even visit people. Imagine. Because I don't want to be affected. Yeah? Yes, sir? No. You can change the plot to any direction. Some people move the doors to different directions. But can you move the body away from the knee junction? You are hit. You are moving your mouth. Main door go back way, sideways or nothing. Your body is hit. So there is no remedy. Yeah. So try to find it. So normally, it's very sad. But uh, I have to be very frank and honest about these opinions. Eh? Uh, this is a knee junction. A house, some time ago, a politician's house in Portland, I did advise him, don't move into this house. He built a very huge mansion, $5 million. Even before he can move in, he ran into so much of controversy with the government about the land, about the structure and so on. And after moving into the property, he died mysteriously six months later. Strange. Today the property is like abandoned, you can go and see the huge property that he has. Even a back lane is considered a T-junction. Even, to be more stricter, even a walk path coming straight into your property. How does a walk path come? Some of us buy property in the front of a playground. In the playground suddenly, you know, some people tend to walk, walk and then create a motorcycle lane and becomes a path hitting into your property. That is also considered inauspicious. Huh? 